I don't know if y'all use TDD, Test Driven Development, at work or at personal projects, but I like to do that. And one thing that I ended up doing is making Emacs my friend when doing TDD. So this is how I set up Emacs. It is pretty simple, straightforward setup to help me do TDD faster. And it mainly comes down to these three package and one of them is doing 99% of the heavy lifting. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Okay. So these are the three packages that I was talking about. Well, there's four right now, but one of them is commented. I'll go over them. So the first one is the compile compile uh, package. That one's built in, so you don't really have to worry about that. The second one is optional, and the third one is one that does the heavy lifting, or that you can make it yourself, but it's easier just to download the package unless you want a little side project. But anyways, I'm stalling. Let's go. Uh, let's go show the configuration. Oh, let me walk through the configuration. So here we have compile. The compile package i say hey i have some customs so custom settings the first one is compilation scroll output i just say if whenever you're showing me the output and there is an error i want you to go to the first error and just stop that stop there so i can just focus on one error at a time the next one is compilation always kill this essentially means that if i have a compile buffer running and then i invoke another compile command it will kill the currently running one and just yeah, it will kill with the new one, replace it with the new one. That's pretty much it. You may or may not like this. For me, whenever I do that, I'm 99% of the time, I'm just running the test suite. So yes, I want to run the latest uh, test suite with the updated changes. So for me, it's fine. For you, it might be different. Finally, the third one is don't hide any max. Uh, there is no max line output. Just show me everything. I want everything. Don't hide it. Straightforward. And I have a hook for whenever I'm in the compile mode buffer, uh, compilation mode uh, buffer. I essentially just highlight the current line that way I don't get lost and right here I have this little golden nugget that I found many years ago that I've just kept in my configuration I don't even remember when I added it it was one of the first things I've added in my configuration when I started using Emacs and it's survived since then so I've used it quite a bit <laughs> without even knowing it because I actually thought this was just part of Emacs until I started looking at this uh, into this video I'm like oh hey this is I forgot about this but yeah what this does is if the compile buffer succeeds with no error it will simply hide it simple as that but if it fails it won't do anything it'll just leave it alone so if you want your compile buffer to just disappear when you're done feel free to copy this and you will have what I have which just gets it out of the way that's simple setup that's how I have for most of the time and then this year I added two new packages the fancy compile so fancy compile this doesn't you can live without it I can live without it but for some reason I just kept it and for those reasons is that it supports color mode and it makes scrolling a little bit easier um, so for the color mode uh, the theme that you're watching is not the theme that I use daily the theme that I use daily is Tao Yin this so very black and white not a lot of color because for me color just is distracting um, at least for me personally and now I just do black and white the theme that you just saw the problem with that is that when I pop up a compilation buffer and there's errors those errors are also in just in black and white but if I have fancy compile installed those will be colored for example let's go into the fancy compile readme uh, let's see and this is a similar output that I will get. So before with the previous theme of that I use daily, it would just be black and white. But if I install this, it will simply color out the error so that I can actually see, hey, this is an error and this is just, you know, uh, verbose output from the test suite or whatever. So I can actually see what's an error code and what's not, what's part of the stack trace and all that good stuff. So this is just something that I use. Now the third one is recompile and save. This is the daily, this is what's basically the true TDD as, uh, as you can say I guess essentially what this does is whenever I'm working on a test file for example a test suite and I do control X to save the file control X control S to save it will automatically run the test suite on for me whenever there is a save so that's pretty handy if I'm making changes it you know as I go it will run the test suite and tell me hey it's failed or not and it gets a little, at first it was a little overwhelming because every time I could save, it would just pop up, but I'm kind of used to it now. And it does, one thing is um, since I'm using that little hook from before that just gets rid of the compile buffer, I don't mind it that much. It's just, oh, it's there and then it goes away. And if there's an error, it just stays there and I know it's an error and I can go ahead and fix it. Yeah, this little thing that I have inside of the configuration is, uh, let's see, 
is whenever uh, I added this to the configuration, a uh, buffer, a little warning buffer will pop up when Emacs start time. That's like, hey, someone renamed the compile command um, to, for something else and it's just a warning. And I knew that it was happening because that is what this package says is gonna do. So it does, the package does tell you this is what's gonna happen. But for me, I honestly, I found it annoying. So I just made a little hook. It's like, hey, whenever we boot time, just get rid of the compile log buffer and you know, just be on my way. Cause I got annoyed of seeing that warning every single time when I boot it up. And of course, this is the com this is the configuration that you need to do when you add this package. So the readme tells you more about it. I will have these links in the description so you can go check them out if you want. Now the fourth package that I do not use, as you can see it's commented out, is essentially does the same thing as what I was saying where if the compile if the compilation buffer succeeds, it hides it. If it doesn't, it just stays. The thing is with this package from what I can understand is that if it fails uh, you can go ahead and do whatever window configurations you need like you know pop up a debugger pop up some more buffers to follow the stack trace and all that whatever and once you are able to fix the bug and the test suite passes it will revert to your previous configuration before the whole test suite fell and you went on the whole wild goose uh, uh, chase duck chase goose chase can't talk but yeah so if you want something like that, if you're always annoyed, they're like, oh, I, I passed the, I fixed the test sweep, but now I have windows everywhere or my layout is different. You might want to want to look into this package. I don't use it because like I said, I'm, I'm fine without it. I usually just have one or two buffers. So for me, it's not really that hard to replicate that. I just close everything, split it, and then choose the buffers that I want. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so let me demo what I've talked about, about the auto just deleting of the buffer and auto compiling on save. So. Let me jump into this project and let me run the test suite. So if I run the test suite, it'll be pytest.b, test b, everything should pass. Beautiful. And then it goes away because everything passed, so there's no error. But if I make something fail on purpose, for example, um, this test suite that I commented because this one fails and I hit save, so I didn't have to invoke it automatically. It just whenever I hit save, it reran the compile buffer and says, hey, this is failing. You might want to look at it. So I can go ahead and let's imagine that I fixed it, but for now I didn't. So I am just gonna comment this out again and then control X, control S, and it auto runs the buffer. And look at that, it makes it go away. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Let me know if you have questions. Remember, knowledge grows when it's shared. Thanks.